You know, if you're here because you believe that transportation dollars should be used for more than bridges and highways, you're in the right place and you've got something to celebrate today. If you're here because you just love the towpath trail and want to see it expand, you're in the right place. We've got something to celebrate today. If you're here because you're frustrated at the pace of getting that towpath trail done, and I know there's a few out there, some folks have a little Nike swish on their forehead and they keep telling me, just do it, just get it done. Well, guess what, folks? Look around. We're building the towpath trail. You're at the right place, and we've got a reason to celebrate today. Now, I was thinking about how to start the remarks here today, and I thought, well, we could go back, we could go back all the way to the 1800s and talk about a fellow by the name of Alfred Kelly, who emigrated here from Connecticut following his sons to become the, pretty much the master of building Ohio's canals, and in particular, the Ohio and Erie Canal from Cleveland all the way to Portsmouth, Ohio. We could go a little bit closer to modern times to a little village in Navarre and talk about a school teacher who became a county commissioner, who became a congressman who backed national parks and backed the establishment of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and helped legislation that made the Ohio and Erie Canal Way a national heritage area. And I'm speaking here about Congressman Ralph Regula. Or we could go a little bit closer to home here and we could talk about two men who volunteered for that new and emerging park and had an idea that, sh that they shared with Ralph Regula, and that is connecting that park to Cleveland through the Cuyahoga Valley to the lakefront. And I'm speaking now of Tom Yablonski and Jeff Lenartz. Or we may talk about a fellow who came to be the third superintendent of that Cuyahoga Valley National Park and who, upon his arrival, went on a good time boat tour up the Cuyahoga River got off the boat with the understanding that yes, we have an opportunity here, and yes, the park I'm about to be the superintendent of will probably never fulfill its potential if it didn't physically and programmatically connect to those communities north and south, Cleveland and Akron. John Debo, could we begin with John? But we're not going to. We're gonna start in December of 1996 at a ceremony at the White House where President Bill Clinton signed into law an omnibus park bill creating the Ohio and Erie Canalway National Heritage Area, the seventh such designation in the country at that time. With that signature came a responsibility that we would create a master plan, a management plan that would tell people what the canalway was and how people would use it. That plan was done over a period of three, three years. It involved 75 public meetings up and down the four counties of Cuyahoga, Stark, Summit, and Tuscarora's County. It basically laid out a vision for this linear heritage greenway that we speak of and talked about how people would use it by actively exploring it using a designated scenic byway, using a fixed rail system called the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad, and then last of all, but not least of all, using a trail network anchored by the towpath trail. A trail that would not be seen as a spine, but a branch of a tree trunk with branches that would reach out in the neighborhoods, connecting historic districts, connecting natural areas, connecting uh, destination points, if you will. It was a grand plan. In the words of Daniel Burnham, we made no little plans. We made big plans for this region. That was a regional plan, and it still continues to be one that's growing every single day. But you know, uh, as my friend Chris Ronane, who's now walking up here, likes to tell me, he goes, uh, to plan is human, to execute, to implement, divine. And folks, uh, we had a great plan, and we've had plans after that great plan that are also great plans. But the gulf between a plan and an execution has to be filled with an important ingredient of money, of funding. And we've been blessed in this particular instance here. This is a, an $18.5 million piece of business. This is a hefty lift here. And trust me, just as they used to say, uh, it takes a village to raise a child, trust me, it took a village to get the funding and the coordination that we needed to make sure this towpath trail would be the best towpath trail it could be. So we have an impressive DS behind us, and we're going to be asking them to help us connect the dots here. We're going to start by talking about federal funding, and I have to uh, give credit to our late Senator George Voinovich, who was a, he was in a class that had the last earmarks. 
last federal earmarks, and he got us a $6 million earmark for the towpath trail that allowed us to apply it to design and engineering so that we could start designing that trail, and then as we did so, to try to identify other federal funding sources along the way. And when it comes to other federal funding sources, there's a key agency in our community that uh, does the work of helping to distribute those funds and does it in a regionally cooperative way. And I'm talking about NOACA. And we have a representative of NOACA here. Once you get those federal funds, you've got to follow the rules and regulations. And to help us do that, we have ODOT District 12, and we're very happy to have Myron Pakush here with us again today. We also have with us representatives of the four parties who are in an agreement to build the Topaz Trail, Cleveland Metro Parks, Cuyahoga County, and the city of Cleveland. So we'll hear from all of those, and we're going to start by bringing up two representatives of our uh, U.S. Senators. Uh, they couldn't be here today, but they thought it was important that they sent someone here to express their support for the project. We know it's kind of uncertain times, if you will, when you're starting to think about federal funding and how things might go in Washington, D.C. I can tell you that I read the skinny budget. Guess what? National Heritage Areas, eliminated. Just like the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, eliminated. By the way, that budget is not a done deal by any means. And we are going to ask our help from our congressional delegation and senators to make sure that the final budget is one that doesn't eliminate programs such as those. And we know that when we ask Senator Brown, I think he's going to be in for the fight. And unfortunately, John Ryan is not here with us this morning to express that. But we do have Karen Kaditsky from Senator Portman's office. I'm going to ask Karen to step up to the microphone and share some thoughts for the senator in terms of the towpath trail today. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Kaditsky. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Karen Kandisky with Senator Rob Portman's office, and it's wonderful to be with you today. Um, the senator regrets he can't be with us today, but wanted me to express his thanks to all of you for being here and for the partnership that um, that, that has created this great success for us uh, through Tim's hard work and, all, and many of the partners here today. So I have a letter here from Senator Portman. Um, I won't read it word for word, but one of the things he stresses in this letter is the importance that public-private partnerships um, have meant to this project and really making this a reality. So again, I want to congratulate all of you, recognize the partnerships here today, and I, Tim just went through. I, I was so pleased that um, Tim brought up Congressman Regula's contribution um, to the parks and my former boss, um, the late Senator Voinovich, and his great contribution. So we all work hard to continue with their legacies and do all we can to support the parks from the national level um, right, right down to the local levels here. So I'm happy to be here, happy to express our congratulations and best wishes uh, for this terrific project. So thanks so much. You know, following up on uh, Karen's remark about public-private partnerships, I have to recognize this guy. Uh, the first piece of Topat Trail that was built in the city of Cleveland was built purely with private funds. It was done by a developer who was building a new retail center in a former steel mill. And he picked it up, picked up the costs on his own, and allowed us to tiff his project. And trust me, without those two actions, we would not be standing here today. Help me thank Mitchell Snyder. Mitch, could stand up? There should be a class on how to be a developer, and Mitch ought to be like the, the, the lead master, the teacher of that class, because he is special, something special. OK, back to federal funding. And again, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the current head of our Metropolitan Planning Organization, NOACA, who again has a very, very important function here in terms of federal transportation dollars, how they get distributed, what projects they get distributed to, and I'll let her help explain that process to you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Grace Colucci. All right. Yes, thank you. Actually, we don't have enough time to really talk about how a metropolitan planning organization works, and it's too cold for most of you to want to stick around anyway. 
Um, as the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Greater Cleveland, we at NOACA are honored to be here today to break ground on another phase of the Towpath Trail, a project that not only provides an alternative form of transportation, but one that is truly transformational for the region. It has long been known to planners that trails and green spaces are a vital part of our communities. They make them more livable, they improve our public health, and they strengthen our economy. All outcomes that are supported and embodied by the NOACA vision and the NOACA strategic plan, its long-range transportation plan, and its TIP. NOACA, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, is made up of 45 elected officials from five counties, Geauga, Medina, Lake, Lorraine, in addition to, of course, Cuyahoga County. It is the only such regional government body in Northeast Ohio. And the point that I want to make here is that the NOACA board felt so strongly that the Towpath Trail was a regional asset that these officials, 45 officials, elected officials from five counties, built a consensus and chose to fund the Towpath Trail with $30 million of its own federal transportation improvement funding, of which $11 million is for this phase alone. Let me put that in context for you. The NOACA board put $10 million of the same transportation funding into the health line, the BRT. That was a transit project. It also put $15 million into the Opportunity Corridor, a road project that is currently under construction. They funded the towpath trail at $30 million. That's three times the amount of the health line, twice the amount of the Opportunity Corridor. It tells you both of those projects together is still not as much as the NOACA board has invested in the towpath trail. And I think that's enough. I don't need to say more. You can see how important this project is for the uh, NOACA board. But I do want to say uh, NOACA has supported the project from the beginning. We're proud to be a partner. And on behalf of former executive director, um, Howard Mayer, who's been involved, um, as well as the NOACA board and myself, congratulations to Tim Donovan and the Canalway Partners, the Metro Parks, the City of Cleveland, the county on this very important milestone today. Thank you for including us. Thank you, and uh, I, I, I want to personally thank Randy Lane also of your, your organization, who's been really a great help in terms of having us navigate the necessary steps it takes to keep that. That, that federal money in place there. Uh, I mentioned before, once you get federal money, you have, there's rules. There's rules, there's regulations, and you have to navigate those. We've been fortunate in our district here to have a very good and close relationship with ODOT District 12. And uh, we've had actually John Model, who I think is in the audience today. John's here. John, stand up. John is about to retire, ladies and gentlemen, which in and of itself is a reason to have a, a, a ceremony. But he's not retired yet. And he's not, we're not going to give you the microphone, but we are going to give it to your boss there. And it's a pleasure to introduce the director of District 12. Please help me welcome Myron Pakush to the staff. Uh, thank you, Tim. Appreciate that introduction. Um, again, my name is Myron Pakush. I'm the District 12 Deputy Director for ODOT. I would like to thank all of our local partners involved in making this iconic trail come to fruition. City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, especially the Department of Public Works, and the Planning Commission, NOACA, Cleveland Metro Parks, and Canalway, <coughs> Canalway Partners. Also, the project also would have been not been possible without the support of local legislators who secured the earmarks for this work. Please join me again in for a round of applause for all these individuals who should, and show our appreciation for their support and hard work. <coughs> Thank you. The ODOT has been involved with the towpath since 2000 during the early planning process, and we are very happy to be here today for the groundbreaking on the $13 million third stage. ODOT's involvement includes administering federal funds provided through NOACA's Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, most commonly referred to as CMAC. These funds are for projects located in the largest urban areas of Ohio that reduce congestion and improve air quality. The towpath will ultimately 
provide great pedestrian and bicycle access to various destinations and points of interest between downtown Cleveland and its southern terminus in New Philadelphia, Tuscarawas County, upon completion of this and the remaining two stages. As part of the current Interbelt Bridge project, ODOT contractors and are building a quarter mile section of the trail under the new bridges, which is part of the stage four plans. This small section is expected to be completed this spring. The, the towpath also serves as a, as a much larger initiative to build and connect nearly 4,000 miles of bike and pedestrian paths throughout the state as part of the U.S. bike route system. In the future, legislation will designate this towpath as a vital part of U.S. bike route number 21, a safe connector for bikers and walkers that will, that will run from Cleveland all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. In partnership with the Ohio Department of Health, ODOT is pleased to carry out this long-range plan created with the help of public input, which will improve our forms of uh, other forms of active transportation. Thank you again for having me here today. I want to show you a little um, exhibit here, what that route's going to look like. Somebody will, will designate this. Route 21. So we're real happy about that, and we look forward to turning this into a state route system. Thank you very much. I got to get out of Steve Lips' way. It's hard to do sometimes. Shh. All right, we've covered the federal dollars involved, and you can see there's a tremendous amount of support there at the federal level. Those federal dollars need local match dollars. And in this particular project, we have relied on state funding opportunities to make that match happen. In particular, we've had uh, funding from the Clean Ohio Conservation Fund, which is a fund that's actually decided locally here through the County Planning Commission and what's called an NRAT, Natural Resource Assistance Committee. And we've also had luck and good luck in securing Clean Ohio Trail Funds, which is uh, administered through Columbus, Ohio, through ODNR. And there's a fellow by the name of Jawan Hammond who runs that program that we are very familiar with, very supportive of, etc. Beyond that, we did have an opportunity, I had an opportunity one day when I was given a call by then Governor Bob Taft to take a bike ride with him from Lower Harvard Avenue up to the Canalway Center where he was going to give the big checks for the uh, trail funds that year, the projects, including one of ours. On the way there, I mentioned to Governor Taft a few times that we had put in a state capital request that, that year. And here in this hand? Kenny, you got this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we put in a state capital request that year for $2 million for the towpath trail. And the governor was a big, by the way, he's a big biker, a big trail guy. He loves trails. And I said, anything you could do would be appreciated. Well, as we tracked that particular piece of business in Columbus, we found out that when it came out of the, uh, the, the process that it allowed the state reps and the state senators to add into it, the list itself did not contain the towpath trail. However, the governor had the last crack at it. We got $1.9 million from a bike ride with Governor Taft. By the way, thank you, Governor Taft, wherever you are. And uh, hopefully we can replicate such a, a story with uh, the current governor. Who knows? We'll find out. At any rate, uh, we do owe a great debt of thanks to uh, those state-sponsored programs. And we do have with us uh, Kenny Yuko, who is a state representative here and a uh, state senator. State senator here, sorry. And so... Uh, and, and this, we've got to give him a little bit of leeway here because he didn't know he was going to speak today. So, he, but, but Kenny, anything you'd have to offer would be greatly appreciated. Good morning, everybody. Well, first of all, a, a short disclaimer. Uh, last Wednesday, I was elected as the Senate Minority Leader for the Senate Democrats. Now, if it's that person's responsibility to provide warm weather for today, I don't get officially sworn in until next Wednesday, so... Just cut me a little bit of a break.
But you know, one thing about Columbus, and and we've heard, we I started my uh, my career at Governor Taft, and we've gone through a few governors since then. We've gone through a few speakers at the houses and, and Senate presidents. I had the honor of working with my good friend, the Honorable Mike Foley, standing in the background there. And we know one thing. We have to work together on certain projects. When we're talking about the environment, when we're talking about Toll Pass, when we're talking about the quality of Lake Erie, these are projects that are important to all of us, whether we're Democrats, Republicans, most of all, we're all Ohioans. And we're going to continue to do so. But despite that, do me a favor and continue to write your legislators. I don't care if they're Democrats, I don't care if they're Republicans, I don't care if they're state or if they're federal. Contact them, let them know how important this is, not only to you, but I see the young children that are here today. Make sure our, our children's future is as bright as ours was when we were growing up. Thank you for coming out today. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and God bless all of you. Remind me to make sure Kenny gets invited to the ribbon cutting. That's great. Thank you for those remarks, Ken. This is a project that is being administered by four agencies. Cuyahoga County, Cleveland Metro Parks, the City of Cleveland, and Canal Way Partners. Each of us has individual roles and responsibilities, but really we work as a team. We work as a team to help design things, make design decisions, hiring decisions, etc. in terms of consulting teams. And I must mention, in this particular case, we did a heck of a good job on hiring a heck of a good team of consultants. Uh, they include Baker Engineering, Michael Baker Engineering, as well as Environmental Design Group. And I think they have some folks here in the audience with us. Thank you for coming out today, folks. Cleveland Metro Parks bears the role and responsibility of doing the ultimate day-to-day -day maintenance and programming for the Towpath Trail in the city of Cleveland. However, we know that Cleveland Metro Parks has been very active, especially in the last few years, in terms of helping Cleveland reconnect with its waterfronts, both the lakefront and the Cuyahoga Riverfront itself. We're, unfortunately, we, can't, we couldn't get Brian Zimmerman. He, well, he, he deserves a vacation. I believe he's on vacation. However, they send us the president of the chair of the uh, board of commissioners is with us today, former mayor Bruce Rinker, I'm going to ask Bruce to step up to the uh, microphone here and share some remarks on the towpath trail. Bruce? Notice the emphasis was on some. Uh, this is a quintessentially Cleveland day. Here we are. It's Earth Day. It feels like Halloween. Uh, and we're next to the steel mills. And I think that the, the symbolism can't be lost on any of us to know that about 60 years ago, when Dwight David Eisenhower decided that we needed an interstate system, that ultimately that visited on Cleveland some pretty significant changes. And so the fact that we're looking at a major source of funding out of transportation dollars really to recapture and to reconnect the neighborhoods that were so heavily impacted by, you know, kind of the unintended consequence of a good thing so, so long ago, to me it's really gratifying. And I'm glad to be here on behalf of the Metro Parks. We're celebrating our centennial. And for the first hundred years, our mission really was to fulfill the dream of William Stinchcomb, who grew up not far from here, and really looked at expanding the green space to envelop the city of Cleveland. But we think that our mission has pivoted in the last several years, and I think you can see this is probably as emblematic as anything of where we are now coming back into the city, really perfusing the tissue, the fabric of the Cleveland communities being pulled together. And you're here listening to us uh, in this wonderful weather because you have a passion and we share a passion and a real commitment to this community. And it's only with the collaborations that we have at all levels and the spirit that we can maintain that we're all in. So thank you. You know, in a way it's amazing, a uh, hundred years of service to the community from Cleveland Metro Parks. And if you thought back or you went back to that time in 1917, when the city of Cleveland was in the midst of just tremendous economic growth here. It was part of what some historians refer to as the Gilded Age. I would call it Cleveland's Golden Age, and it would go all the way up into the 1920s when we built those fantastic theaters on Euclid. But back then, when they looked to design a park system, uh, they purposely left out the Cuyahoga River Valley because in the notes, if you read it, it said that it was too important for industry. And they were right, it was too important for industry. That's where the wealth of this city was being built. 
However, think about what we're doing here today and what has been happening up in that Cuyahoga River Valley with the Merwin's Wharf, etc. We are in a transformational moment here. As Bruce said, it's a new day, it's a new plan, it's a new vision here, but it's one that really is going to have transformational effect, I think, on the city of Cleveland. We're trying to be a visitor destination, and I think things like this that are going to interface with our in industry in a very authentic way are going to make us what's different about people coming here rather than Baltimore. So let's keep that in mind, folks. Second in our four-party agreement, I'd like to introduce a representative from Cuyahoga County. Now, unfortunately, uh, Armin Budish at the last minute had something come up and couldn't make it here for this particular ceremony. But we do have a stand-in here, Mr. Calvin Overmeyer. Say it down, Calvin. Um, the county has been the lead agency in this particular project. They are the project manager. And their roots go back to the times when Paul Alcinas, or actually even before that, when Rick Kostelik, or Rick Jim Kostelik, and Rick Sika wrote a very comprehensive plan for the, this river valley called the North Cuyahoga River Valley Study. That really is what started to lead this whole march toward National Heritage Area designation. Obviously, Paul Alcinas came in after uh, Jim Kostelik and continued to further the planning there. He took that idea that was outlined in our management plan in terms of a trail network and started to help define that through a green print opportunity. Eventually, the, the county uh, role shifted as Bob Cliver and Stan Kozaleski became important players there through the county engineer's office, managing the project, managing consultants. All the way to today, when we have uh, from that team Jessica French and June Goss and Mike Dever, Michael Chambers, I'm going to forget somebody I know, but uh, forgive me for that if I did. Anyway, uh, just a tremendous team there from the Cuyahoga County representing their work in this particular project. Again, we have with us Calvin Overmeyer. And Calvin, come on up to the microphone. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. And, and Tim's been a wonderful guy, kind of spearheading this whole operation here for us. So I uh, want to thank him. Uh, I want to apologize for uh, Mr. Budish not being able to make it. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that uh, he had other commitments, but uh, he's very excited uh, about the towpath uh, trail groundbreaking. is a great way to kick off Earth Day here and uh, show a support to the, uh, the green space. Uh, it's a very exciting project, and I'm, I'm very excited to be involved with it. Uh, we're breaking into new ground. Uh, we're doing some wonderful things in the Tremont area, uh, right between the residential and the industrial. Uh, you see all this black fencing back here where the, the trails are going to lead from Steel Yard Commons back in this area, uh, all the way over to Literary and uh, just below um, Sokolowski's. And uh, it, it's just a really fun project, very exciting. Um, just cutting edge, and uh, we're very excited about the whole thing. So thank you, everybody, for coming. The third party in our four-party agreement is the city of Cleveland. And the city of Cleveland has a role and responsibility in this regard. They are going to own the property that the Topat Trail Project is built on. And that's an important piece of business here. If you look behind me, see that industrial piece of property there? That's going to be City of Cleveland property. It's already City of Cleveland property, come to think of it. And they're going to be managing and maintaining this. And trust me, making a decision to own property like that is not easy. However, the city knows and understands that as we do this project, that's that parcel is going to be transformed as probably more than any other single parcel in the whole system of the towpath trail. So get a good look at it today. Take some pictures because perhaps we'll be coming back here for a groundbreaking, or not a groundbreaking, but a ribbon cutting, and that picture is going to look a lot different than it does today. That, by the way, is property uh, formerly owned by Jerome Osborne. Anybody here ever hear of Jerome Osborne? Anybody here from Lake County? I think he owns that county. 
Anyway, he owns a bunch of industrial property in the Cuyahoga River Valley, and we went and approached him about our project because we needed a piece of his property in order for that towpath trail to continue north. And I remember we had about six meetings with him, and I remember we came out on the site for one of those meetings, and I walked downhill with Jerome, and at that time we had an expanded ask. We had, first we said we only need a little bit, then we said, well, you know what, we think we, have, we need more because we want to have a new drive entryway into Clark Fields that could also help the towpath trail. So he turned to me and he said, well, Tim, if I, if I give you that much property, where am I going to put the asphalt plant? See, that used to be an asphalt plant. And I said, well, uh, you're right about that, Jerome, I, and I don't think there'd be a room for an asphalt plant. We walked up the hill and we got to the top of the hill, bridge there, and he turned to me and said, you know, Tim, I, I don't think the neighbors would probably let me put another asphalt plant here. I said, you know, I think you're onto something there, Jerome. He goes, can you get any money? Can you find me any money? And I said, yeah, I think we can find you some money. We made a deal. We own the whole parcel now. And there won't be any more asphalt plants, folks. Yay. Not that I'm against asphalt plants, but I think the towpath trail is going to have a much better use here. So anyway, representing the city of Cleveland, we are very proud to have both uh, a, a cabinet member speak on behalf of Mayor Jackson and the current councilman. So let's start with the cabinet member. It's my pleasure to introduce a friend, a colleague, somebody who was a former councilman who had interaction with us in this trail, this trail system, and now the Chief of Regional Development, Mr. Ed Rifkin. Thank you. Good morning. The uh, Mayor Jackson's schedule, unfortunately, and commitments don't allow him to be here today, but uh, his administration is well represented as I'm joined by our planning director, Freddie Collier, Commissioner DeRosa, George Cantor, uh, and, uh, 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 and Mr. Cater he used to be with our, our planning department as well. Um, you know, I am happy to join our collaborators, uh, the, uh, the county, the Canalway Partners, the Metro Parks, NOACA, ODOT. Uh, we're here with city council members, Councilman uh, uh, McCormick, Councilman Brancatelli the Community Development Corporations, and most importantly, the citizens. You know, I'm here for the mayor. I'm supposed to link this towpath to his vision, and it's easy to talk about sustainability and healthy Cleveland initiative and, and uh, uh, sustainability and so on. But in a way, I'm, I'm kind of glad I, I have the liberty to represent him, and he's not here, because uh, those of you that uh, deal with mayors, uh, and, uh, you know, we're chief of staffs to mayors like Chris or... Our former mayor lake behind me, you know how mayors can uh, sometimes deal with issues. And I know Monday morning, if the mayor were here, he'd be calling some of us in, in and he'd be asking us, why wasn't the grass cut? And he'd be asking it in a way that only a mayor could ask. And if you respond by saying, well, mayor, we thought it might look good, kind of natural sustainability, <laughs> wouldn't go over too well. Let me take, though, the mayor's vision and kind of personalize this a little bit. It was uh, a number of years ago. I was uh, Councilman Brancatelli's uh, predecessor as councilman in the Fleet, Slavic Village, Broadway area. And uh, I remember it was a Sunday, and uh, Tim Donovan, Tom Yablonski, Jeff Lenars met with me and my wife, Jan, and we took a hike. And this was before towpaths. This was when there was a, a, some idea that there could be some, some, uh, some link here between uh, those communities to the south and, and the lake to the, uh, to the north. And we hiked, and it was a nice sunny day, a little bit warmer, in fact, a lot warmer that day. And we walked, and I think we walked from Harvard Avenue down to, to Granger Road. And even though I was the councilman of that area, you thought, well, you know, pretty densely populated area, a lot of industry. You know, I got to see it, I got to touch it to see if this idea has is, is, uh, got some, some legs to it. And you saw the potential in the midst of that density and that industry for this opportunity for, for green, for recreation, for transportation. And you know, it, and it, it started to become a reality. That toll path came all the way to Harvard Avenue. And, and what, what spun off from that? You know, we had a, a park at the foot of Fleet Avenue called Washington Park, city owned, a lot of acres, well underutilized. Now today, it's, it's the Washington Re Park Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks. We had an abandoned rail line cutting through the middle of Slavic Village. Today, it, it's a rails-to-trails link 
to uh, Washington Park and to this system. We had a new housing development developed by, and sad to say, the uh, recently late uh, Nathan Zarimba, built on Turney Road, the Mill Creek uh, housing development, with its, its link, uh, uh, trail link to, to this system that uncovered and exposed the only waterfall in Cuyahoga County, Mill Creek Waterfall, which I know many of you have hiked by and, and have experienced. I'll never forget when I took Mayor Voinovich there and we hopped over a guardrail and we're going through all this overgrowth and the mayor said to me, Ed, where are you taking me? Are you upset with me for some reason? And all of a sudden you got through all of this and you saw this waterfall. And I said, Mayor, can you see the vision and what this would add to the quality of life for this neighborhood? What does this all mean though? What it means is in the context for Mayor Jackson is, is that this is how you link neighborhoods to neighborhoods, people to people, city of Cleveland to other cities in, the, in this county and this region. There are no corporate limit signs along this towpath. This is a regional asset that links us all together. And this towpath becomes the spine to that transportation system as we work in the city of Cleveland to add cycle paths and midway opportunities and protective bikeways like we're going to have an opportunity corner. I told you about specific projects on the east side of the city of Cleveland that, uh, that connect to this spine. And to, to pick up on uh, Tim's earlier comments, this towpath links back to a history that linked to the Cuyahoga River and that water that went into a canal that was a commerce for this, uh, for this city and allowed this city to develop and this region to develop into a major urban center. And it's this towpath spine, it's that Cuyahoga River spine that is going to allow us to continue to link east and west. And I know we, we have a lot of, we spend a lot of time making that east and west thing a negative discussion, but really this, this towpath, that river, that spine is actually the positive that links all of this city and this region together. Thank you for uh, joining me this morning and on behalf of Mayor Jackson, we, uh, the mayor pledges to continue to collaborate with our partners to, uh, to get to the finish of this towpath system and to get to a real celebration in 2019, 50 years after a little fire took place on the Cuyahoga River and, and uh, our celebration that is part of all this network. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. You know, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't also point out the role of the city planning department here and some of the other departments and personnel who have helped make this project a success. I look out in the audience, I see Fred Collier out there, I see George Cantor who's been with us from day one there, I see Marty Cater who has recently retired but still with us in spirit, I could tell. And we see uh, Jamie DeRosa up here in the uh, second row, I don't know if I'm missing anybody, but uh, we want to thank all of them for all their due diligence that they've had with this project. Yep. Give them a round of applause if you could. And just on a little backtrack, you know, we have staff that meets uh, monthly to make sure that the towpath trail projects, all the different stages are, uh, are uh, online and making progress, etc. And each of the agencies have representatives on that particular staffing committee. And uh, I would feel terrible if I forgot to not give this particular guy credit because he's just incredible. He's an incredible resource. He works for Cleveland Metro Parks. He retired once. He came back. He's now working part-time to make sure that we can get this thing done. And I'm talking about Dick Kerber here. Help me thank Dick Kerber. It's kind of funny, you know, when the Cavs introduce themselves and they're like, I'm Kyle Irving, 6'3", point guard, blah, blah, blah. You remember LeBron, all, all positions? Dick Kerber, all positions. <laughs> I'm Scott. Okay. Joe Simperman's startled us all when he announced that he was going to step down from council to pursue other interests with Global Cleveland. And the big hot topic of the time then, where we had handicapping and everything else, was who would Joe choose to be his successor? Well, we have an answer to that, obviously. Kerry McCormick. And not only are the early returns in, I'd suggest the late returns are in, and Carrie's just doing one bang-up job, and we're so happy that Joe, as usual, made a good decision. Help me bring up Carrie McCormick, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, and um, you know, 
Councilman Simperman, former Councilman Simperman, asked me uh, to take over this role on St. Patrick's Day, and with the last name of McCormick, I always say he was making sure I wasn't misbehaving. So, um, but thank you so much for having me here today. Um, and you know, it's a it's a really really exciting time uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. And Tim took my uh, my seam a little bit there. I wanted to you know say how much of a pleasure it's been to to work with Director Collier, who's here in the room. Uh, also, my council colleague uh, Tony Brancatelli who's been a great mentor and also has gotten fond of calling me the intern uh, in various <laughs> meetings. So that's been, that's been wonderful. But, um, it, you know, it, we've got a great team at the city of Cleveland, and not only for the folks behind us that have been such an integral part of the towpath trail, uh, but also the, the, the folks in the community here today. So I wanted to make sure that we also recognize Tremont West's team who's out there, uh, Michelle and Scott and other folks as well as our residents here in the community today, because we know that the, the Towpath Trail is a regional asset. Uh, but we also know too is how important quality uh, public infrastructure and quality outdoor space is for the health of communities. And so for our Tremont community here and beyond, uh, we know that when we have access to, to, to public, to uh, fully accessible spaces for families and children and our seniors to use, we have healthier and happier communities. So. Not only is it a regional asset, but it ties directly into the direct resident impact here in the city of Cleveland. So that is such an exciting thing uh, for Tremont and for our community. We're also here uh, appropriately at Clark Fields. And um, for any Tremont residents out there, please don't throw any tomatoes at me yet. Uh, we are working in an, on a very exciting project. I know it's taken a little bit longer than folks have would have liked, but the city of Cleveland and Mayor Jackson are committed to investing millions of dollars into this park right here to create a world-class uh, green space amenity. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause for sure. So, so again, it's been a pleasure to work with our great team, uh, with Mayor Jackson, who's been a great leader here in the city of Cleveland, my council colleagues, as well as Council President Kelly, who I, didn't, I don't believe is here today, who's been a great mentor to me as well. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, echo this prior sentiments of, of Councilman Simperman. You know, Councilman Simperman was such an incredible advocate uh, for the quality of life of our residents and the health of our residents. So we've got to make sure to give him a shout out. So I know everyone is cold, but I would not be doing my job if I didn't tell everyone that we've got wonderful coffee shops and restaurants in Tremont. So make sure when you leave here today, you go and check those out to warm up. Thank you all for coming out. y'all bring your shovels? Yeah. All right. Well, that's, we're at the point in the program where we're going to go and do some uh, ceremonial shots of uh, groundbreaking. So that's what the program's all about, folks. So come on up. Got your shovels. Orient yourself back here. <laughs> 